Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Lauren. Thank you so much for watching. Today I'm in a monochromatic like peachy look. I know for a lot of you guys that it's like it's like cold out, but in LA it's just beautiful all the time. So I'm feeling like spring vibes way too early, like way too early. <laughs> anyway, uh, I hope you guys are doing well. I'm going to have a bit of a chatty intro. I'm so sorry, but tomorrow's my birthday and I'm filming this and I'm gonna upload it on the same day. And I just feel like I'm like really excited for my birthday this year. I'm usually not that excited. Like, Mm, it's not that I'm not excited. I just don't make it a big to-do and I'm actually like throwing a birthday party this year I'm like actually doing something so that all goes to say that I'm indulging a little early today I'm having a little drink. It's so good. It is whipped cream vodka with coconut LaCroix mm. It tastes like a tropical paradise and it's pretty low calorie if you care about that So anyway today we're gonna be talking about Maybelline what where who is Maybelline what no <laughs> um I feel like for whatever reason I sleep on Maybelline I used to love Maybelline it used to be one of my favorite drugstore brands I was always really excited for their releases and I don't know what's happened I just well in general I don't necessarily talk about drugstore brands a ton one because I never go into the drugstore I don't know about you guys but I'm never in a Walgreens I'm never in a CVS I'm never in a Rite Aid like I'm not <laughs> I just don't pop by those places ever. I'm also never really in a Target. There really aren't that many Targets by me. There aren't any Walmarts by me. I like, what? So I feel like all those places you would stop in for something other than beauty and then check out the beauty aisle anyway. That just doesn't really happen to me in my life. So I tend to not know much about the beauty releases in the drugstore unless they are on trend mood. And that's kind of it. So anyway, I'm going to be continuing on my series of five wants and five nots. This is kind of like a brand breakdown where I go through a brand and the products that they offer currently. And I let you guys know the products I'm most interested in and why, and the products that I'm least interested in and why. <laughs> It's almost like window shopping. It's like a hypothetical situation, like what I would purchase maybe if I had to limit it to five. I also really like this for anyone who has tried any of these products. You can let us know your opinions and your thoughts and we can kind of get a survey of like what's maybe actually good to try out and what we should steer clear. Okay, I know that was a really long intro, um, but let's get into it. I can just tell I'm gonna get the white ring. I can tell. I have a feeling. Let's start off with the wants because these are the things I'm most excited for and we can save the like spicy moments at the end. Honestly, two of the first wants on my list are newer products from them. And I think that's because one, they're on trend. They are more going with that glowy, lighterish coverage. Like I'm into that. So the first one is the Dream Radiant Liquid Medium Coverage Hydrating Foundation. I love that this has hydrating in it. I love that it says medium coverage in the title. That is exactly what I want personally. Um, I I have really given up the the pursuit of perfect skin when it comes to full coverage. Oh my God, it's so dark. Oh my God, that's even worse. <laughs> Hopefully that looks better. I've really given up the pursuit of like perfect full coverage skin. I honestly don't even really like the look of it. Like it's not even like it's just a lot of work or it doesn't hold up. I don't really like this mask like appearance, especially in real life. I think in studio lighting, I think in a photo, it can look really great holding up to like high high flash and highlights. It can look really amazing, super snatched, super put together. But in real life, when you're just gonna like walk around, maybe get a coffee, whatever, it's a lot, it's a lot. And I just find for me, it actually does the opposite of what I want it to do or what it should be doing. I don't feel more confident, I feel less confident. I feel like, holy shit, everyone's staring at this insane face of makeup that I have on. And that's not obviously not what I want, but I really, really have to when I'm doing my makeup, remember that because it's so easy to get carried away. It's so easy to like put on a layer and then be like, oh, there's imperfections here. Oh, there's imperfections here. And then you just, you know, you know, five layers deep and you're like, oh shit, what did I just do? Anyway, back to the foundation that we're actually talking about. I think this looks nice. I just like the trend in general of seeing these types of foundations and just something a little bit different. I'm not saying they've never been available before, but it is nice to kind of get away a little bit from all the full coverage, stay matte, always flat, never budges type of makeup. Next, okay, number two for my wands. This is the Cheek Heat gel cream blush. It comes in six different shades, which I think the shade range on this is really beautiful. Um, it doesn't feel like anything's too overlapping. It has some bright colors. It has some more neutral shades. Really, really beautiful. And these are basically like a Glossier cloud paint dupe. And it's, it's surprising to me how long the drugstore took to dupe this. The cloud paints have been around for forever. They've been raved about for forever. I know Flower Beauty has a like 
blush balm or something that's very similar as well, but that's been out even for a while. So I just feel like it took Maybelline and even CoverGirl's coming out with one right now. It just took a while for them to get there, but alas, I am excited that they're there. And I do really love a cream blush. I like a more dewy look. I mean, I don't even set my foundation anymore. Who am I? <laughs> so I'm definitely interested in those. I would like to try them out. One thing you'll notice from this video and something that is way different than how I used to be. I used to be someone who wanted to try these out and then that was enough for me to go out and buy it and try it and compare it and that's all I wanted to do. And I still have that tendency. I still want to know formulas. I still want to know which one I'd like better. But at the end of the day, I realized like if I bought this one from Maybelline and I had the CoverGirl, plus I have every single Glossier Cloud paint. It's like, how can I possibly use any of those? I mean, I guess it's good to have some information and I think for some products, it might be nice to be able to give that information across. But realistically, I think what I really do want is to be more conscientious of what I already have. And although I might be excited about a product and I can talk about it in this way, in this hypothetical, it doesn't mean I have to go out and buy it. It doesn't mean I need to test the formulas against each other to see which one's the best. Like that doesn't necessarily really matter. And there are a lot of other people who maybe don't have the Glossier ones who can try try this brand and know it's great and still actually use it too. I'm full of tangents. I am so full of tangents, guys. And look, I haven't even had one sip. If you were thinking, man, she's drunk, I'm not. I've literally had no, no sips of this cup yet. Oh. But now I have, it's pina colada time, baby. Moving on to number three, and this is gonna be like a broad category. So I put so many eyebrow products in here because I feel like they have a wide variety of eyebrow products to try, some of which I have tried and I think they're okay. Some of which I'm like, what the And then others that I'm like excited about. So there's the Brow Ultra Slim Defining Eyebrow Pencil. Super slim. This thing looks pretty dang tiny. I think that these slim eyebrow pencils are perfect for adding stroke-like hairs to the brows. I feel like my eyebrows change every day how I do them. I maybe get into a rut of like a week, maybe two weeks that I go. But other than that, it kind of changes. But this looks like something I'd like. And I really enjoy that they had a light blonde shade. They had a light blonde and a blonde shade. So if you're someone who has extremely light brows, I know the struggle. You could try that out. It looked a little warm, but maybe give that a go. Next in eyebrows that I'm interested in, this is the Tattoo Studio Brow Tint Pen. So this is kind of gimmicky and usually these gimmicky products end up at my like, uh -uh, mm, no thank you. But I think this type of product is like innovative and potentially could be something good. Um, let me know if you've tried this one specifically. So it's a three pronged uh, eyebrow pen that you can use to add stroke like hairs, but instead of it being like a crayon formula, like a waxy based pencil, it's like an ink, it's like an eyeliner. And I do have, <laughs> The Glossier, man, it's like I'm like a weird Glossier freak, but I'm really not. I do have the Glossier pen, but the color of it's so light and I do have pretty full brows. I just have light hair. It's just blonde all the way. So this one, if I got it in a darker color, I think it would maybe be a little bit faster. I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of interested in that one. I'm very seduced by the idea of having a pen that can just like, ding, ding, ding strokes. And I think that a liquid formula as opposed to a crayon can add a different texture and look than you know each other. But the one that I have isn't quite doing it for me. Next, another Tattoo Studio product. This is the Waterproof Eyebrow Gel. This comes in 10 shades. They have like so many shades. And it's in it's in a squeezy tube, but it has a spoolie, kind of like the Ico mascaras or anything like that. I'm very interested. I really liked the brush on it. It seemed nice and small, like it could, you know, do the work on a brow where it wouldn't get everywhere. Cause for a while they were coming out with some crazy brows. <laughs> Pretty crazy spoolies for brows, but this one looks just like normal, small, nice, I like it. And I like the idea of it being waterproof because um, I find I brush my hairs up and sometimes they do fall throughout the day. And so I'm assuming that waterproof will really kind of stick in place, stay on, and I do like that. And last for brows, this is in the brow vicinity is what we'll call it. It's the Brow Precise Eyebrow Highlighter. It comes in three shades. I really wish they had one darker shade for like really deep skin tones, but this just brought me back. I remember I bought a product off of All Cosmetics Wholesale. <laughs> this is back when I was trying to snag a deal all the time and probably was buying really freaking expired makeup. But nonetheless, I had this brow highlighter that you would put on like right under your brow 
and I actually really liked it. It really helped define my brows and I wouldn't mind having something like that back just to like try it. Obviously I could use concealer for this. Obviously you don't have to have this product, but I just had like a memory of it and I was like, oh my gosh, I wonder how I would like that now, especially just for a little bit of definition and highlighting under the brow. I really don't highlight my brow anymore. I find kind of with my eye shape that sometimes it can be a little bit it can make my upper eyelid a little puffy. I feel like that's already where I carry the weight of my eye with my hooded eyes. Um, so by highlighting my brow bone, it just kind of makes that area protrude or give the illusion of protruding even more. And I think it can be pretty, but sometimes I'm like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that. This product caught my eye and I was like, oh my gosh, I would I would maybe try that. Moving on to number four, and this is a mascara. I feel like Maybelline used to be my go-to for mascara. I still do use some of the mascaras in my kit. Um, I do like just like the very basic like green and pink tubes because I'm not using the spoolie, so it's just about the product itself. But I specifically remember another kind of throwback product for me. This is the Volume Express, the Mega Plush Mascara. I remember wanting this one because it was like teal and it was so cute and then also because of the plush it was like the plushies like I thought it was such a cute name <laughs> it was literally all about marketing and packaging but I remember there was a time where it was my favorite mascara it's like what I used I really liked it so I would love to give one of these a go I've been using more like hourglass wands lately but this one is a little bit more I think it's just kind of like big and fluffy <laughs> but I would I would give that one a go and then last I have another kind of category of wands and these are considered Concealers. Concealers from Maybelline, I think it's a place that they shine. They shine so bright. I really would love to get the Instant Age Rewind Dark Circle Eraser Treatment Concealer, whatever. Love that concealer. And it's funny because I didn't really like it at first. I kind of talked a little bit of shit on it, but it's freaking good. And I love that it doesn't apply too much product. I feel like it does the job while still being very lightweight on the skin. This is one of those products that they've expanded the shade range on, which I think is amazing. It is a high, high, like, like bestseller from them. So definitely I would want to try that. I also love the Fit Me Concealer. I loved that concealer for a very long time. If you've been with me for a while, you know I talked about that for a long time. Like I loved that concealer. I would love to give that one another go and see how I liked it. And then I also put on here the Dream Lumi Touch Highlighting Concealer. I really love the idea of something like this too. It's kind of like the YSL Touche Clot where it's a little less coverage with a little bit more luminosity. Definitely my style right now. I would love all those concealers. I would love them. They sound amazing. Yes, please. How am I already sweating? I told you it's hot here. I told you. All right, now let's move on to the knots. These are the products that I'm not interested in uh, by looking at them. Obviously, some of these I have tried actually, but some of these are not. It's all just like this hypothetical situation. And the reasons I wouldn't buy them, I'm about to tell you. So first we have a brow product. Now I just listed off a ton that I would love to try, but this one is a no. Mm -mm. This is the Brow Drama Shaping Chalk Eyebrow Powder. I'm sorry, but things with the word chalk in them, I'm already like, Suspicious. Yeah, I don't know if I want that. <laughs> this comes in five different shades, but do you remember when products like this were popular? They're like paddles with powder and you're supposed to put them on and somehow be precise and not get like a, f I feel like the only thing you can get from this is a fuzzy eyebrow. I'd love to know if you use a product like this, if it works for you. I do think it might be good at initially filling in if like I do have blonde eyebrows, so I could get a lot of color down fast with something like this, but it's not gonna be precise. So I'm not someone who's super finicky with my brows and sits there and really works on them for like hours and hours, but I just think this is a messy product. I think that it's if you're using this and you're struggling like please like retire it and try something new because I don't see myself I mean the only thing I could think is maybe taking a brush and using the powder itself with an angled brush that would work maybe but not as it is not as it is next another knot hey guys so I'm editing and I realized that number two I don't really agree with anymore so mm, let's just move on to number three that didn't happen okay I'm back. All right, next is another one of those like, I think gimmicky products. This is the Lip Studio Python Metallic Lip Kit. I think there were a couple different shades. The one that I saw online was like a red and like bronzy. Don't quote me. And I think the whole point of this was you would use one of the potted actual like lip colors to put on your lips and then you would use the kind of powdery metallic shade to go on as a lip topper. And I think this was maybe when lip art was really popular online. I'm not sure why this was a thing that they created because you just don't need it. Like 
use a lipstick, use an eye safe powder on your lips, which could be an eyeshadow, it could be whatever, a highlighter, whatever you have. I mean, I would suggest obviously making sure you could put it on your mouth, but other than that, you're like good to go, baby, and you got colors on for days, okay? You got colors for days. So this was just kind of one of those gimmicky hop on the trend. It seems like kind of fun and different, but in reality, it's just like a big hunk of plastic and makeup that you don't need. All right, for number four, this is where we get into like, I don't know, I don't wanna be controversial. <laughs> no, it's not controversial, but I'm just not attracted to any of their eyeshadow palettes. I'm sorry, okay? I tried, remember the nudes in the nudes, the gold palette, all these little cute little palettes. I was really attracted to these things um, a couple years ago when they first came out and they're still kind of continuing on. They had something called the Burgundy Bar Palette, which looks very similar to those. From my past experience with the shadows, they just weren't super pigmented. I mean, if they were the only thing I used and I didn't use eyeshadow very often and you know, I just didn't care about makeup, they would be fine and I'd probably use them and probably like them. But I love eyeshadow. <laughs> I have so many beautiful eyeshadows. They're there's absolutely no way you're gonna freaking tempt me into getting the soda pop palette or the lemonade craze palette. There's like this fleeting moment of me liking these palettes and being excited that there's a purple or there's like a yellow in these palettes. But in reality, it's like, okay, that's not that big of a deal. So many brands are doing so much more colorful shadows out there um, that I'm just, I'm just not attracted. I know that I'll be disappointed because there's no way they could stand up to any of the shadows I already have, even if they're pretty good. Even if they are pretty good, they're not gonna get the use. There's really just no sense of me spending any of my money on these products because I know they will not get the love that they deserve and I'm honestly not sure how much love they do deserve. And that might be a little bit surprising because there is the the City Kits all-in-one eye and cheek and it's kind of more iridescent and beautiful. But honestly, I look at that and I just know I'll be disappointed. I just can tell. I just see it and I'm like, promising me too much? You're promising me too much? I know I'm not gonna like it. I just have a feeling. But hey, if you have a review on one of these palettes and you think, no, Lauren, you will love this, please. Let us know, let us know what the hidden gem is because I, I almost don't believe you already. And last on my list, this is the Dream Matte Mousse Foundation. No, hell no, hell no. I bought this, I don't wanna say recently, it was probably at this point, I mean time, what is time? But I did buy this based off nostalgia. I was like, I'm gonna try this foundation again, I'm gonna like it. This sucked, I don't know how we use this. How did we do this, guys? First off, color selection, it's like you're pink or you're orange, uh, that's it. You're either really freaking pink or you're really freaking orange. As far as consistency of this product, it is a mousse, they do, yes. <laughs> They are right about that. But it's like a silicone mousse that I find um, doesn't ever sink into the skin. It only stays on the skin. Even if you're oily, it's going to show dry patches. If you're dry, oh my gosh, stay away. Stay away from this product. It's very similar to the Kevin Aquan like skin balm. So, you know, you guys all know how I felt about that one. So I definitely, it's a no, 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 no. Nostalgia is not getting me anymore. <laughs> That product needs to stay in the past, honestly. Sorry, but nah, mm, mm Make it a nice, creamy, moisturizing formula. I'm into that, I'm into that, I want that, please. But this is a no, it's a no. All right guys, so those are my five wants-ish and five nots. I always have fun like breaking down the website, seeing what's on there, uh, especially if it's a brand I'm not as familiar with as some others. And if you guys know me, you might be surprised. I didn't mention any lip products and there are some baby lips that I thought were kind of cute, but honestly, one, I'm over baby lips. Like I was sucked in. I did the whole baby lips collecting thing. I did it, yeah. And when it comes to the like tinted balms that they have, like the newer ones, I, none of the colors, man, they were all very bright. They were all too loud for me. I, I wish they did that in like a very nice, like wide selection of neutral shades. That would be beautiful. But since they didn't have any shades I'd want, I was like, no, nah, I'm not gonna waste one of my spots for some lip products that I probably won't use. But yeah, that's kind of everything. Leave down below a brand you want me to do this with next. We've done all drugstore. I'm gonna leave the playlist link down below. I've done all drugstore brands with this type of video. So if you have a drugstore brand I haven't done, definitely leave it linked. Um, I'd love to know any of your reviews, any of the products you would like to try or wouldn't and why. And other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you're having an amazing day. I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.